It's Christmas. And then the intro. It's Christmas, and as such, we're going to show you some incredible festive recipes that you can do in Rockbox. In this video, we're going to show you a great alternative to turkey. We're going to use a pork tenderloin, stuff it with mushrooms and walnuts, wrap it in pancetta, and then cook that in Rockbox. That pancetta fat that's left in the pan will then cook us the most incredible Brussels sprouts. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to make is our stuffing, which is going to be kind of like a mushroom duck cell. So we're going to blitz up some mushrooms and some tasty bits. We're going to cook them with some butter and onions, and then we're going to stuff them in the pork. So I've got one clove of garlic here, and then we're going to add 50 grams of walnuts. To that, we're going to add one sprig of rosemary. Pull the leaves off, chuck them in. So next up, we're going to add our thyme. So I've got a few sprigs of thyme here. You want to end up with kind of about two tablespoons of thyme. And we're just going to give that a quick pulse to start breaking it down before we add the mushrooms. And now we've got 200 grams of chestnut mushrooms. Chestnut mushrooms are very similar to buttered mushrooms, but just have a bit more flavour to them. Okay, so now we're going to pulse this until our mushrooms are all nice and finely chopped. So, probably about a minute. All of joy, put your eyes at Christmas time. So once you've done one verse of Band-Aid, that should just about be blitzed up nicely, okay? So we're just gonna transfer this to a bowl. Um, we're gonna now dice a shallot. So I've got one shallot here. The biggest advantage of using a long shallot over a small shallot or an onion is their shape just makes them really easy to dice. So I've got 40 grams of butter, unsalted butter. That's gonna go into a pan. And we're just gonna soften that up in Rockbox, okay? So once your butter's nice and melted, we're then gonna add the shallots to that and just give those a really nice season. We haven't seasoned the stuffing at all yet, so we're gonna season it at the end but we want to get a good bit of seasoning into the base now, into the onions. Cool, give those a little shake up and just pop them in. They're only going to be a couple of minutes in Rockbox. Right, so they've started to soften up really nicely. And now we can get our stuffing mix into the butter as well. So depending on the size of your tenderloin, this might make a bit more stuffing than you need. But if it does, it's incredible the day after. Chuck it in a bubble and squeak. Or just use it as a stuffing again. You know, it's, it'll keep for a few days. So you could stuff a chicken with it later in the week or whatever. Cool, so we're just going to pop this back into Rockbox. It won't want long now, just probably another minute. Cool, so there we have it. That is cooked out. We can pop this into our bar. And we've ended up with this festive smelling stuffing, which is lovely, but it just needs to be a bit more luxurious because it's Christmas. So, two teaspoons of truffle oil, and then just give it a taste. If you feel it needs more salt, add some. If you want to add more truffle oil, you can. But, hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so we're going to crack on with the pork now. So I've got a pork tenderloin here. You might also see this called a pork fillet. This is the primest cut of pork you can get, and it is delicious. So to prep it, it's got a chain just on here, just clinging on. And we're just going to take that off as our first porter call. Cool. And now we're just going to clean it up. So we're just going to take off some of this sinew. So these bits here, this bit of sinew here, will just kind of almost pull off. You almost don't need your knife. You just get under there with your fingers. Cool, so we've trimmed up the pork, we've taken all that sinew off, and now we're ready to kind of butterfly it. Nice sharp knife, and just cut down the middle, but not cutting through to the board itself. And then just use your fingers to kind of pull it open. That's the start of our butterflying, because now we can use our left hand to kind of put pressure on both sides of the meat, and use our right hand and the knife to just kind of slice in those gaps, and it will start to open up quite naturally. And you'll end up with something that's quite evenly flat. And I've got a little hole in there, if they're gonna happen, it doesn't matter too much, you can work around it. We're just going to get the stuffing in there, so give it a good season. So although we can make the stuffing beforehand, this kind of needs to be done Christmas morning, really. Cool, so it's all seasoned. Now we can go in with our stuffing. And of course, Cliff Richard famously wrote a song about this dish, mistletoe and swine. I don't know if you're aware of it. Cool, so you can see because I've got a smaller tenderloin here, I've not actually needed all this stuffing. This would probably do me too. When we put the stuffing in, we've left almost like a picture frame around the outside, and that's just going to make sure that our stuffing stays inside. We've got, it makes it a bit easier to roll it up. So I'm going to grab this little flap here, put it over the stuffing, and then just start rolling. So we could cook this pork tenderloin as it is now, we could tie it up and roast it, it'd be great, but it's Christmas, so we need to, you know, level it up a little bit, make it a bit more special. So I've got 12 rashers of pancetta here. This is incredible, it's delicious, and we're gonna wrap this around the tenderloin. So where, where we butterflied the pork, and we said we weren't too concerned about cutting through it because we're gonna wrap it, it's very important we keep this pancetta tight together. So we've got our lovely rolled tenderloin, that's gonna just lie on our pancetta, about two thirds of the way down towards you. Then you're just gonna pull the pancetta over the top of the pork from the shorter side, and then just simply roll him up. And hopefully, 
If you followed all these instructions, you should now have something that looks like this. Just the most insane pig and mushroom in a blanket, really. It's like a pig in a duvet on holiday in a posh hotel, having a spa, drunk. So now we're gonna tie it. You could tie this in just individual little knots if you wanted, but we're gonna show you kind of how to tie it properly if you like kind of butcher's string tying. So I've got a length of string here. How long is a piece of string? Oh, who knows? And you want a lot more on the right side of the pork than you do on the left. So I've got all the string this side and I've just got the little bit this side. I'm gonna go underneath and I'm gonna tie myself a secure knot. Secure, but not stupidly tight. If you pull this really tight, you're gonna start squeezing out the stuffing out the end. Cut this little end bit off. And now, on the right-hand side, we've got all this string to play with. We're gonna pull the string underneath, then pull our big bit of string towards us and back through the hole. And exactly the same, repeat the process. So, underneath the pork, this is our last one. So this one's slightly different. Still go through here, back through the hole. Only this time we need to finish it off. So we're going to tie this into a little knot now at the end. So that's ready to go in Rockbox now. So Rockbox is been on for about half an hour, 40 minutes or so. It's raging hot, 500 degrees or 900 degrees Fahrenheit, if that's how you roll. And before we put the pork in, we're going to turn the flame down to its lowest setting. And we're going to use that residual heat that will remain in that floor to really crisp up this bacon. And it's going to cook in about 10 minutes or so. So we're going to rub this guy with a little bit of olive oil and then into a cold pan. Let's cover that with foil. And in we go. So the pork has been in Rockbox now for 10 minutes. We've rotated it halfway through. So five minutes, rotate, five minutes more. Now we're ready to get it out. It smells like Christmas. Even though it's not turkey, it's none of the Christmas things. It still smells like Christmas. So remove the foil and you'll be greeted by this beautiful looking bacony, porky goodness. Now we're just gonna rotate them over. And now we're gonna go back into Rockbox for about, probably about five or six minutes, five minutes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep moving it, keep rotating it, keep turning it. And we're just gonna brown up the rest of this pancetta so it's crispy all the way around. So that's our five minutes in Rockbox, uncovered. And we've used that time just to crisp up this pancetta all the way around. And this smells and looks, I think, incredible. So we're just gonna cover this with foil. And you wanna leave this to rest kind of for at least 10 minutes really. So just pop this to one side to rest. All that pancetta fat has come out it's all looking delicious, and to be honest, you can't just bugger off outside on Christmas Day and come back with just one bit of pork. You need to come back with a side dish as well, otherwise everyone's gonna be really annoyed at you, okay? So we've got 250 grams of Brussels sprouts, so I've just halved there, and we're just gonna pop these straight in, and they'll start to take on all that beautiful pancetta fat now. Just gonna smash a couple of garlic cloves, pop those in as well, and that's it. So now back into Rockbox, so still on low flame, they're going to be in there for kind of about five or six minutes or so and they'll be nice and al dente, still have a nice crunch to them, but they will be packed full of garlic and bacon flavour. They are so delicious. Okay, so the sprouts have had about five minutes. So just a little bit of salt. You don't need to go too heavy on the salt because that pancetta is obviously very salty. And a good hunk of black pepper. So the pork has been resting for about ten minutes or so and now we're ready to carve it. Any of this juice you've got left over you can just pour over the sprouts. And now we're just going to take off the string and give them a carve. So unlike um, some other cuts of pork, if this is slightly pink, ever so slightly pink, that's not a bad thing. Tenderloins can be ever so slightly pink, so don't worry about that too much. So we've made that beautiful mushroom stuffing. We've butterflied our pork, rolled that around the stuffing, wrapped that in pancetta, and then cooked that in rock box. And that floor has meant that the pancetta has crisped up amazingly well. And because that fat's rendered in the pan, we've then managed to dump our sprouts in there they're incredible, really charred, really al dente, so much flavour. This is one of the best Christmas dinners you will ever make. And if you do make this, or indeed any of the other recipes on our YouTube channel, let us know, okay? So we're looking out for the hashtag Gosney Kitchen. So do that on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, any social media. Share it with us so we can see your work as well, because we want to see what you're doing. That's good. That is good pork. God bless us, everyone. So we've tied that, that is now nice and secure. That stuffing's not going anywhere. The meat's gonna stay nice and moist. Don't know why that's relevant. So there we go, nice and securely tied. That is this, I'm having a nightmare with this bit. Mistletoe and wine, mistletoe and wine, Band-Aid. But you know, Christmas is quite a busy period, so it's always nice to have a bit of extra time on your hands. No time like the present, is there?
I could keep talking about how nice time is, but you know, you've had time. No, we haven't got time for that. Because time waits for no man. <laughs> I think I might put some chives on a recipe, because then I can say, when I get them out, I'll be like, huh? Chiving home for Christmas. Mm -hmm.